is study of parasites. That's it. Study of medically important parasites. Maybe. Okay. Or parasites are causing infection. Okay. Those are medically important parasites. Very good. Well done. How parasites are different from other microbes? Yeah. How will you define it? Because other organisms don't cause disease, but parasites cause disease. Or are they? they are they? Are they? Okay, wait, wait. I understood. Define parasite. That is my next question. Define parasite. What is the meaning of parasite? Yeah. Parasite is an organism. Tell me properly. Parasite is an organism. Okay. It might be inside the host. You are trying to say inside the host or inside outside the host. The yes. Whatever it is dependent, that is called as host. So you know what is host. Then you say parasite. Okay. That is called as so something that is dependent on something can be a parasite. That is your de definition, right? So any organism that is depending on a host for its survival, that is called as parasite, right? Host won't get any benefits. Keep in mind, benefits to the host is null. Because of this parasite, the host won't get any benefit. But a parasite will get benefits for free food, we can say. Only parasite will get food, okay? benefits, but not to the host. Only such thing can be stated as a parasite. Now, parasites are two types, as you can say. If parasite cannot live without a host, parasite that, that will die, Okay, when the host is dead, if the parasite dies, that is, it is strongly dependent on host. Such parasites are called as obligate parasites. Okay, even if host is dead, still the parasite can able to survive. Such parasites are called as facultative parasites. Facultative parasites. Very good. Now, you yourself dig your hole, okay? But the two type of You say something that is dependent on a host is a parasite. Then give me examples of parasite. Plasmodium. Wait, wait. Para plasmodium 5. But you said any organism. Clearly, you said any organism that will depend on a host is called as parasite. You said any organism. Mm -hmm. Now I will give an example. Listen. Pigeons, okay? Pigeons started coming into this classroom and they kept pigeon nest inside this cabin. And pigeons started, you know, uh, defecating here. Okay, there are pigeon white stools everywhere. Okay, during this time, when a pigeon doing this uh, fecal material, when a pigeon doing fecal material, can I say that it is damaging this infrastructure? It is damaging this classroom infrastructure. Can I say pigeon, pigeon as a uh, parasite? Because pigeon getting benefits of uh, shelter in this room. But this room, you know, deteriorated. This room is damaging. Room is a host, whereas pigeon is a parasite. In that, pigeon become a parasite. You got my point? Yes, sir. So the definition of parasite itself has a loophole. That means a bacteria is a parasite, a fungus is a parasite, because all the you know, host and the organisms, then how would you differentiate a parasite from other microbes? How you will differentiate a parasite from other microbes such as bacteria, fungus, virus? How would you differentiate a, bacteria, a parasite from bacteria, fungus and virus? Yes, tell me students. The way in which they obtain uh, nutrition. The way in which they obtain the nutrition how um, yes. um, they feed. How they feed? Um, because bacteria can reduce their body. No? Some bacteria. No. I appreciate you were uh, crying, but uh, anyway. Life cycle. Life cycle, even bacteria has a life cycle, yeah? Infected, not see. You are saying infecting the way they are getting food. Every bacteria will have its own methods of getting food. By the way, aerobic, anaerobic, you know, nutrient rich, non nutrient rich, everything is there. Yeah. See, yes, tell me. Reproduction, no. Bacteria both have a sexual and asexual reproduction. Yes. Spreading disease, even 
definition to identify a parasite bacteria. Then how to distinguish? You can use two types of I said a fungus and I said a parasite. How to differentiate a fungus from parasite? It's a clear, clear, clear distinction can be seen. Fungus looks more like a plant. It is an immortal. It, it, it won't move. Whereas a parasite is a movable. So parasite is a, a moving eukaryotic infectious uh, host dependent uh, organism. See now we got a good definition of parasite. Now there are some more rules. Keep in mind. I said you can use a multicellular. Now you can can live in two states. You can use stem cells can live in two states: a single state, single cell state, and multi cell state. Single state you can load. And multi-state you can do. Single state, oh, now I will give examples. An example of uh, a fungus, a parasite, a fungus, a parasite. A single state fungus is called as yeast. Yeast cell. A multi-state fungus is called as mycelium mold. A single state parasite is called as any idea? No. A single state parasite is called as protease, protest, protozoans. Now you understood, see? A single cell parasites are called as protozoans. A multi cell parasites are called as helminthes. Now I am drawing you to the depth. Now you, you understood the difference between a protozoan from prokaryote and a mold from a uh, helminths. Is it clear? Yes. It's interesting. Now let's deep dive with parasitology. The classification of parasites. I love this topic actually. That's why I took it from. Classification of parasites. The parasites are of two types. Broadly, parasites are divided into two types. What are the two types? Very good. Now you say it. How we divide them based on their cellularity? Are they single cell or are they multi cell? Depending on this, we know they divided them into protozoans and helminths. Very good. Now, these protosomes themselves have been classified into two types. Listen. Themselves into two types. Listen very carefully. Based on their shape, based on their uh, shape is not my word, the right word will be morphology. Okay, based on their morphology. And based on their habitat. Habitat in the host or location in the host. Okay, now pay attention. Based on morphology, based on morphology, the protozoans are four types. They are when there is no proper morphology, it looks like a random uh, organism with a true nucleus and say it is a eukaryote. Such parasites are called as what is this called as? Amoeba. Amoeba. Okay. Amoebas. Amoeba themselves have kept, you know, in the tree of life, we kept them in a sarcomastigophora. Sarcomastigophora, okay? Amoeba are also called as sarcopores. Sarcomastigophora. Sarcomastigophora. Then, second one, some of the single cell protozoans have a tail. A tail. They are called as flagellates. Flagellates. Some of the protozoans have a shade on the body, a 
and the K will move them. Some protons are having K on all over the body. They are paramecians or ciliates. 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 Example paramecium. Paramecium. Okay, ciliate example paramecium. Plasmate example. Are you paramecium is example of euglena uh, is for okay this is paramecium sorry euglena 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 is for uh, flagellates where ciliates is for paramecium okay I hope you know paramecium structure right yes yeah uh, like uh, yeah. similar like right? yeah a paramecium yeah then the last one finally it don't have any motility. It's an immortal single cell protozoa. It is immortal. It's, it, it looks like a ball. It looks like a ball. Example: sporozoids. Sporozoids. Okay. Can you give an example of sporozoids? Okay. Is there any immortal parasite that can still cause an infection in the body? Is it possible? And then give an example. There is a one celebrity example, by the way. Sporozoids example. Can I say it? Uh, by the way, I want to tell a few more things. Uh, in case of protozoans, the larval forms, okay, adult forms, adult plus larval or baby forms. The baby form of uh, baby or larva, okay, protozoan baby is called as spores. Whereas other uh, protozoans are called as vegetative states. Vegetative uh, state, vegetative cells. Okay? Now what will tell? Malaria Yeah, malaria. Okay, plasmodium uh, is a vegetative state of malaria. Plasmodium is a vegetative state of malaria. Whereas the baby state of malaria are Pro, uh, uh, what are Mirozoids. Mirozoids are the immortal form of the same parasite. The baby form is Mirozoids, that is Mirozoids in malaria, you know, there are obviously you will have to call Mirozoids and Plasmodium. You know, interesting, right? Parasitoid is very interesting. Clear? Up to here is very clear. Then, based on their habitat, how protozoans are classified? Based on that habitat, how the protozoans are classified, I will mean, test them also. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, this is also called as a coccidia. 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 Coccis. Okay, there looks like a co cocci of a bacteria. Okay, how to differentiate a sporozoid from a cocci? This will undergo gram staining and this won't take gram staining. Bacteria is a gram positive, whereas a gallium is a cocci. Whereas a single cell sporozoites will uh, overtake a gram cell. Okay, because it's a eukaryote. Kind of, uh, next one. Based on their habitat, right now. Based on their habitat, these parasites are broadly divided into three types. Okay, or two types. I will make it simple. Two types. Very important classification. Please write it down. You won't get this opportunity always. Uh, see, parasites that reside in the intestine. Parasites that reside in the blood circulation. Parasites that reside in the blood circulation. Parasites that reside in the intestine blood. Okay? Now listen. Give me examples for Yeah, intestine amoeba. Intestine amoeba. Okay, give me. Entamoeba, histolytica. Then intestine amoeba, blood amoeba. Example. Blood amoeba. Is there any such example of blood amoeba? Can you give an example? Yeah, write down. Nectaria species. Nectaria have you heard about Nectaria disease? Okay, there is a parasite of Nectaria. 
Nectaria is a type of amoeba that will go to the bladder tissues. Okay, bladder tissues. Uh, we call it bladder tissues. Okay. Yeah. The next one. Uh, flagellates. Give me example of flagellates. Yeah. I'll give the intestinal flagellate example and the bladder tissue flagellate example. Yeah. Intestinal flagellate example students. Ah, uh, very good. Giardia lambia is the intestinal parasite. Then what is blood parasite? Blood flagellate. Blood flagellate example. There are many flagellates in the blood actually. Trypanosoma species. Okay. Trypanosoma species. Trypanosoma species. Okay. Any more example? Trypanomonas vaginalis. That is a tissue parasite, a reproductive, other than intestine. Okay? Trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis. Any more you want to add? Leishmania species. Very good. Leishmania species. That's because Allah has got a black part of the world. Any more? Yeah, that's it. Then, now, uh, CVX. Right now. The intestinal ciliate example. Any idea of any intestinal ciliate infection? Intestinal ciliate example. Right now, Valentinium coli infections. Valentinium coli. Valentinium coli infections. Valentinium coli infections. And uh, I didn't get a ciliate for black ciliate students. I didn't get it. If you wire the number, let me know. Black cilia, cilia pyramid. Then coming to the sporozoids. <coughs> Intestinal sporozoids. Any idea? Any idea? Right now, isospora belly. Have you heard about this word? Isospora belly. Right now, right now. Intestinal sporozoid. Isospora belly infection. And other one is in intestinal cryptosporidium species. C R I P T O. Cryptosporidium species. Cryptosporidium and isospora belly are the intestinal parasitic infections. Cryptosporidium and isospora belly species. Okay. Ah, then give me example of blood and tissue sporozoids. Ah, right. Uh, yeah. Oh, oxides or sporozoids. Give me examples now. Yeah. Blood and tissue sporozoids. Give me example. Very good. Why are you confused now? Yeah. Plasmodium species. Plasmodium vivax. Plasmodium mobile. Plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium malariae. All plasmodium species. Anyone apart from plasmodium species? Toxoplasma species. Okay. Toxoplasma gonii. Toxoplasma gonii. Okay, toxoplasma bondi or uh, infections, then um, Babesia microti, Babesia infection. I don't know what is this Babesia. So, there is one example Babesia species infections. So, these are the black uh, flagellates or uh, sorry, uh, black sporozoids. Is it clear? Yeah. Now, you have seen multiple parasites of protozoans and you have clearly understood the difference between. Various types of protozoans based on their intestinal and their blood and tissue infections and uh, have their and morphologies, right? Is your confusion clear now in parasitoids? This is very good classification actually. Yeah. When I was studying my BSC, I mean, my first thing is I crack down this table. Are you okay? Let me just keep my question. Okay, fine. Coming back to the next thing, that is. Multicellular parasites. The multicellular parasites are called as helminthes. So I will keep helminthes here. Helminthes. How helminths are classified? Again, they are classified into two types. Let, let me make it a simple thing, and uh, then I will do further classifications. They are not in categorized into. Okay, I will do like this one, this classification. Based on morphology, Again, helmets has been uh, uh, classified based on their morphology and their habitat or location of infection. Habitat or uh, location of infection. Location of infection. Now, based on morphology, how the uh, helmets are classified? Tell me, students. Based on morphology, see, if the parasite looks like a uh, flat body if it looks like a flat like a scale 
Okay. Flat. They are looking like a flat. Okay, like a scale, like a mobile. Such organisms are called as flat worms. The the medical term for flat worms. There is another common term for flat worms. Like they look like a tail. Okay. Hence they are also called as tail worms. Or the proper medical term for flat worms is cestodes. Cestodes. See, this is important. You used to confuse between cestodes, lepidodes, and lepidodes. See, cestodes means flat worms. Flat worms are cestodes. Flat worms are cestodes. Then, if their anatomy looks like this marker, if their anatomy looks like a cylindrical, like a round cylinder, okay? If their anatomy looks like a round cylinder, okay, like this, such worms are called as round worms. Round worms. This is a normal term. What is the medical terminology for round worms? Nematodes. See, now you are understanding in depth. Round worms are also called as nematodes. Then last and final, uh, these organisms look like animals. Okay, they are microscopic organisms, but they look like animals. They will have a, you know, uh, they look like they have some uh, uh, gastrointestinal system, some nervous system, some uh, respiratory system. They look like a couple of organisms. They look like they have a proper anatomy. They look like a small human for small animals. Such parasites are called as tenatodes. They have three divisions of the world. Okay? The gastrointestinal, neuronal, and the no, skeletal. Since they are showing three distinctive characteristics, they are called as tenatodes. Okay, tenatodes. Actually, they will say they have three body parts. So that will be great. Anyway, tenatodes. Example for a, a common term for tenatodes is tenatodes are very common uh, in the liver. Inside the liver, we have seen tenatodes. Hence, they are also called as liver flukes. They are also called as liver flukes. So, now you have understood three types of uh, uh, morphologies of uh, helmets they are cestodes, nematodes, and Primatodes. That means uh, flat body organisms are called as The other common term for cestodes is tail worms. Okay. Uh, round worms are also called as and liver fruits are called as Very good. Now give the examples for uh, habitats. Okay, let's see the habitats. So yeah, habitats are again two types, just like the intestinal, intestinal and Ah, blood and tissue, blood common tissue. Okay, very good. Blood and tissue. I will, I will write it here again. Okay. The uh, cestodes, nematodes, and primatodes. Ah, give me examples of intestinal cestode. So you already know the common name, right? Flat bones, round. Up to 30 to 40 meters length, up to 90 meters length. 
you know 90 meters means from here to that wall any example if i say you will say you know it arena tv sonia see that is the problem you are very hard at but you follow the connections tv sonia if the host is a pig yes that is tv sonia tv species if the host is a cow then ah you make some if the host is cow then it's called as arena tinia saginata there are other species hymeno lexis nana hymeno lexis nana so hymeno lexis means uh, this is a rectal infection near the rectum of the patient we with the hymen layer of the rectum will have a parasite hanging outside and that is hymeno lexis nana that is a cesto as a platform Okay. Yeah. Now it is clear that what are cestors and types of cestors and their infections. The types of round balls, intestinal round ball. Tell me about celebrity example. Ah, uh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Nematodes. Yes. Give me examples. Intestinal round ball. Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides. Then. Ascaris lumbricoides is also called as I forgot this term. Ascaris lumbricoides is also called as round worm. Okay, round worm. Ascaris lumbricoides is also called as called as round worm. Okay. Then any more examples? Intestinal nematodes. Uh, examples. Antinobia spendicularis. You have to study this. Actually, you are supposed to study this in your lab. Please, please. A ventricularis. The other name of ventricular ventricularis is. Uh, and for those students, ascaris is cuckoo, I guess. For ventricularis, it is uh, cuckoo. I forgot this term. I really forgot. I think ventricularis uh, ventricularis. I think this is cuckoo. Uh, I need to cross my right? mind. But keep in mind, okay, there are differences from home and home forms, okay? Uh, Enterobias is ventricularis, uh, then there is a... Mm, okay, I'm sorry. Enterobias is ventricularis, looks like a big... Okay. It looks like ventricularis. Yeah, that's why this is called as big worm. Yeah, we can check it, big worm. You know, you will beat horses with a big... Similar width for you will see. I will see uh, in color width form. It resembles like a width. Okay. The next one. Uh -huh. Yeah, hook form. This is a uh, uh, articulation of anterior limb. It have hooks, okay, to the body. Or uh, um, anterior stoma, anterior stoma, duodenal, duodenal. This is called as hook form. Anterior stoma, duodenal has a sister. Is a better than female sister. His sister anatomy looks like this. Okay, that is called as nectar amphicarus. Yeah. So there are uh, so examples of two forms are anterior stomach duodenum, nectar amphicarus, big form anterior cervicalis, and uh, uh, you know ascaris is round form. Then uh, I think you might see this in yourself. Sugary food, okay. In your stools, you might got white forms, small white forms. Have you seen small white forms? Not me, then they are all your like children. Actually, the small white forms, they look very small and pure white. They look like a grain of uh, you know, rice grains. Looks like a rice grains. They are uh, uh, that is intestinal infection or parasitic infection. They are called as. Uh, Ritualis ritura. Ritualis ritura. Ritualis ritura. Which is also called as a ping pong. Ah, yeah. I will give you a classical example. You might feel, you know, itching around rectum after eating sugar. 
okay the teaching over uh, around the red pill is caused by pin marks and you will get what albedo for tablet okay albedo for tablet literally kills the this kind of sex okay in this type of class yeah yeah so we got examples in the style uh, examples okay river flow is a part of in the style only because river is a part of uh, Thank <laughs> you.